Hey everybody, Home Slice Henry here, and in today's video, we are taking a look at a new Pokemon in the world of Pokemon Go, Meloetta. Now, Meloetta, in its Aria form, was just released at GoFest 2021, and it has a really unique typing. It has a normal and psychic typing, which means it is a rare psychic type Pokemon that actually does well against ghost types. Now, I did have two viewers submit some battles using Meloetta in the Ultra Remix, so we will be checking out two teams with Meloetta to see if it's worth investing in for the Ultra League. So without further ado, let's hop into the matches and let's take a look at Meloetta in action. So you can see this team is leading Roserade, they have Meloetta, and Sylveon. This is a pretty neutral lead versus a regular Machamp. Rock Slide, of course, is going to hurt, mainly just because Roserade is incredibly glassy. Roserade building up a ton of energy and going for the Weather Ball bait, bluffing the Leaf Storm, trying to get a shield, and the opponent calls the bait. Very nice call by the opponent. And now going for a second Weather Ball, gets the shield, tries to switch out. Unfortunately, that's a CMP tie, and they are going to have to eat the Rock Slide. And he's going to switch into the Sylveon, and the opponent stays in and get farmed down. Oh no, my guess is the opponent didn't see that this battler switched and thought that the Roserade died. So my guess is, is they didn't realize that the Sylveon was actually switch locked. That is unfortunate, but this battler is in a good position to take advantage, able to survive the Shadow Punch and get off the Moonblast. This is resisted, but Gengar is pretty glassy, so Gengar forced the shield. And now it's time for Meloetta to shine. All right, these confusions are doing massive damage to Gengar. Shadow Punch resisted, hardly doing anything. And they have a Gallade in the back. The opponent did a very nice job of deferring the confusion that would have killed the Gengar onto the Gallade. But at this point, Meloetta is in a fantastic position to close this match. They are going to be able to shield up the Leaf Blade and they'll be able to confusion down the Gallade and then confusion down the Gengar. So right off the bat, Meloetta closing strong, and there's a couple popular cores going around, whether it's Machamp Snorlax, Snorlax Gengar, or Gengar Machamp, and Meloetta honestly acts like a pretty decent core breaker against those particular cores, so if that's something you're having trouble with, Meloetta could be a pretty solid option. This is a not the best lead by any means versus Obama Snow into Roserade, but Roserade can hit back for double super effective damage with Weather Ball, able to get both shields, and now gonna safe swap into the bulky Sylveon to tank some damage. I really like that play. And the opponent brings out an Ampharos, which is a very cool pick. This is just a Thunder Punch, so the Sylveon really doesn't have to respect the Thunder Punch here. And Sylveon trying to get to the move, able to get to the Moonblast here. This is gonna be doing big damage to the Ampharos, and that is going to be taking it out. Able to win switch advantage. Abomasno comes back in and farms down. And this is a little rough. Brings in the Roserade and going to shield up. So trying to get to that Weather Ball. They should be able to outpace Abomasno here unless Abomasno switches. And they're just able to get to the Weather Ball. That is going to be taking care of the Abomasno. Now what is in the back? And it's a Machamp. Oh no. Machamp, you hate to see it. Meloetta is here to shut it all down. Meloetta showing some adequate bulk, surviving that rock slide there. So nicely done by Meloetta, surviving the rock slide from the Machamp and able to take them out and get the win. All right, hopping to the next match here. We have Roserade into Shadow Machamp. As you can see, the remix meta has quite a lot of Machamps and that is one matchup where, Me where Meloetta is going to be doing exceedingly well. Cross Chop does quite a bit, and now they bring in a Giratina Origin, and interestingly enough, rather than bring in the hard counter with Sylveon, opts to go for the soft check in Meloetta. And Meloetta should do pretty well here, I would imagine. Shadow Ball, with being single resisted, will still probably do a decent amount of damage, so I definitely understand the shield there, but gonna be able to build up to two Psy Shocks. And we'll see how much this does. We're probably gonna see a shield here at first, and then able to go back to back on the Psyshocks. I'm very curious to see how much this does on a Giratina Origin. Takes it out. So Meloetta able to handle a Giratina Origin as a Psychic type. That is not something you see every day. The Galarian Stunfisk comes in and they throw the Rock Slide right away. Definitely a mistake by the Galarian Stunfisk not to over farm because now this battler can bring in Roserade and he's in a pretty good position to start launching these Weather Balls. Nice swap by the opponent. They were anticipating the opponent. They were anticipating that this battler was going to throw the double Weather Ball, but they held onto the energy 
and brought out the Charmer, and it was a good game. All right, hopping into the next match, picking up a Gengar lead. This is not a great lead for Roserade, as unfortunately, Roserade is doing resisted here, whereas the Gengar is able to hit for neutral. Fortunately, Roserade hits very hard, and Gengar is very glassy, so they are going to be able to get shields back in response, and able to catch on Meloetta. Fantastic catch. So you can see Shadow Punch not doing a lot, and these confusions are tearing through the Gengar. They panic swap, whoa, into a Landorus Incarnate. Now that's some spice. Oh my goodness. Psyshock does so much. Landorus Incarnate is, and they just don't even get to a move. You hate to see it. They have a Snorlax, and this is another matchup where Meloetta can do pretty well because these licks are single resistant. Able to get off the Psy Shock, which is fantastic, and the Snorlax feels like they have to throw to avoid a move. That's huge, because now the Snorlax is out of energy, and they can bring in the Roserade, and Roserade is in a pretty good position to help close this match. Body Slam there, they bring out the Gengar. Weather Ball is going to be taking care of the Gengar, and... Now, Sylveon is in a good spot after this Grass Knot lands to help with taking out the Snorlax as well. Lands it on the Snorlax, in comes the Sylveon. There's quite a bit of lag, but there's nothing that the Snorlax can do at this point. They're just going to throw a move, but all that does is prolong the inevitable, and they're able to farm down and get the win. So very nicely played there. All right, hopping to the next match, we have Roserade into Dialga. What is that doing here? All right, PSA, Dialga, great for Master League, terrible for Ultra League, don't do it. <laughs> As you can see, a Weather Ball from Roserade still does almost half, oh my goodness. And Sylveon is here to absolutely victimize this Gallade safe swap. Leaf Blade comes through, and they're just not even going to get to a second one. Oh no, they bring out the Dialga, that is, that is not a better response to a Sylveon. Oh no, shielding up the Iron Head, Dragon Breath will do absolutely nothing here. They can just charm the Dialga all the way down. What's in the back? It's a Machamp? What is this team? Oh my goodness, this team does not like to see Charmers. Oh my. And then you just bring in Meloetta and it's just game over at this point. Meloetta just shutting it down. Oh man, I do like the double fighter backline, but you'll definitely want a tankier steel type than Dialga. All right, hopping to the next match. Picking up a lead versus Dragonite. This is not the best lead, so safe swapping into Meloetta, probably hoping that they're going to switch out so he can align it with the Sylveon endgame. But the Dragonite is not switching out. This is really not what you want to see. Things not going to plan, but going for the Psy Shock here. Dragonite is not the tankiest. I could see a shield here. That makes quite a bit of sense and able to get the confusion through as they throw. Double committing the shields to Meloetta, over farming as much as they can and able to farm down. That's huge and blind throwing the Thunderbolt. Very nicely done. Thunderbolt into the Gengar, and now aggressively switches into the Roserade, and in comes a Shadow Machamp, going straight for the Grass Knot. This will be doing massive damage to the Shadow Machamp. Shadow Machamp is at a move. I think this is just a Cross Chop. It is the Cross Chop that still does a lot, because it's Roserade, but Roserade now able to farm down, and they have a Weather Ball ready for that Gengar. This will be doing massive damage to the Gengar there. Does over half of its health. Gengar able to farm down. Now this could be a little tough. You may have to try and catch onto Meloetta. Bringing in the Sylveon and oh, tries to catch onto the Meloetta, unable to do so. The Confusion registered. Do they have Sludge Bomb? They do not. They more than likely have Focus Blast. So fortunately, able to survive the Gengar and get the win. All right, hopping into the final match of these sets, picking up a Gengar lead. Again, this really isn't the best, but at the very least, since Bullet Seed charges so fast, Roserade can apply a ton of pressure in this matchup. Now going straight for the Weather Ball here, this will be doing a nice chunk of damage. A no shielding Gengar, wow. And now the Confusion registers on Gengar, so if they don't switch here, they die, and they do defer it onto Crustle. As you saw there, a Shadow Ball, which would normally tear apart a Psychic type, doesn't even do half to Meloetta. That normal subtyping is absolutely massive. Can they get to a move? Oh, they just can't get to a move. Very, very close there. 
They do have shield advantage. Going for the Weather Ball. That may be a mistake. Weather Ball does not KO here, and the Crustle has a move. So that is very unfortunate. Having to shield up, and then you just switch into Sylveon here. Switches into the Sylveon to charm down. Very nicely done. It's all going to depend what they have in the back. They have a Lucario. Now, Lucario, being a steel fighting, does take neutral from charm, and the charm sneaking through there is detrimental to the opponent. Shields up the Shadow Ball. The opponent tries to sack the Gengar and they concede the match. And hopping into the second Meloetta team, as you can see, this battler is running Meloetta, Tangrowth, and Typhlosion, picking up an amazing lead versus a Gengar, and they save swap into, is that a bite for alligator? Oh my goodness. Now that is not something you see every day. Holy crap, a bite for alligator. For what it's worth, it's definitely not worth it to run Bite on your for Alligator by any means. Are they going to be able to farm down here because it's biting it so slow? Able to just farm down. In comes the Gengar. Oh my goodness. Tangrowth has so much energy. They're just going to be able to absolutely bully this poor Gengar. And we'll have to see what is in the back. And it's another Dialga! No, please don't. I promise there are better Steel types. And Dialga concedes the match. Hopping to the next match here, we have Meloetta into Snorlax. This battler does switch out. That is honestly a pretty decent matchup for Meloetta, but they are looking to potentially save the Meloetta for endgame. Body Slam really doesn't do a whole lot, and the opponent brings out a Gallade. Now, Gallade is not the tankiest, so Gallade is really forced to use some shields here and able to get to another Power Whip. This will be applying a ton of pressure. Able to get both shields from the Gallade. Gallade's probably just gonna farm down. Gallade able to farm down, and this is a tough decision to make. I think you can probably just bring in the Meloetta here to absorb some damage because that way at least they can't close combat. They're forced to go for their non-stab charge move in Leaf Blade. So nice awareness. They're able to get the confusion through deciding to shield it up. Shielding up the Leaf Blade and now aggressive swap into the Typhlosion. And Typhlosion can survive a Leaf Blade here. Very nice counting. Typhlosion, oh man, Typhlosion with shield and energy advantage is so rough for opponents. They're going to be able to get to a Blast Burn and they're one incinerate away from a second. And this game is rapidly getting out of hand for the opponent as Typhlosion is taking over. Able to get to a second Blast Burn. What is in the back? It is a Gengar. And Meloetta is going to comfortably take this matchup. Meloetta shielding up the Shadow Punch. Could have tanked it totally fine. And now it's going to be able to get to the Psy Shock, which is going to take out that Gengar and give it the win. So very nice awareness, recognizing that if there's a Snorlax, there could possibly be a Gengar and saving the Meloetta for endgame. Hopping into the next match here and picking up a pretty neutral lead versus a Dragonite. And it's a Dragon Tail Dragonite. Interesting. Now, Meloetta farming up as much as they can and unfortunately does lose the CMP tie. Going to shield up the Dragon Claw and fire back with the Psy Shock to get that shield back in return. Able to get the shield back and beautiful catch onto the Tangrowth, recognizing that, that the Dragonite had farmed up to two. Very nicely done. Able to bait out another Gallade. And again, this is just a Leaf Blade. So the Tangrowth does not have to shield this. And the Tangrowth is going to be able to get to a Power Whip, which will apply a ton of pressure to this Gallade. Power Whip comes through. That does huge damage. A little bit of lag. Able to farm down. And, oh, very nice read. Actually looking at what came in instead of blind throwing the Rock Slide. Able to get off a Power Whip against the Excadrill. That is a massive play. Now bringing in the Typhlosion. Typhlosion has to respect the Drill Run here. That'd be doing massive damage. And the opponent switches into the Dragonite, now going straight for the Blast Burn here. Blast Burn is resisted, but Dragonite is not the tankiest. And now switches into the Meloetta, able to Confusion down, and the opponent concedes the match. That was a wild match, but as we're seeing, Typhlosion endgame can be deadly. Picking up a pretty neutral lead here in Crustal. Definitely have to respect the X Scissor in this matchup, as X Scissor will be doing super effective damage. Shields up the X's are very nice read there. And now going for the Psy Shock. As you can see, these confusions are really adding up on Crustle. So even though Meloetta doesn't charge the fastest, able to, with the help of uh, confusions and a Psy Shock, 
farm it down. In comes a Shadow Executor, and now at this point, you just launch as many Psy Shocks as you can get to, and able to get to a second one. This will probably go unshielded, I would guess, because now they know it's just a Psy Shock. They double shield? Oh no. Oh no, Typhlosion's here to shut it all down. No, Mr. Executor, not today. Oh my goodness, shielding up the Seed Bomb and able to get to another move. It, if this is a Seed Bomb, it's fine. If it's a heavier hitting move, just the Seed Bomb, okay. And it's a Toxicroak in the back. Toxicroak doesn't like Blast Burns either. Blast Burn comes through, that does huge damage. Able to get to another Blast Burn here again. Y'all have to stop giving Typhlosion shield advantage. It will not go well for you. So, so far in the second set of battles, Typhlosion a little bit stealing the show. Hopping to the next match. All right, a very cool lead in Sceptile. Very nice catch onto the Tangrowth, catching the Leaf Blade. Very nicely done there. And the opponent counter swaps into a Weavile. Oh my goodness, the spice. Now, Weavile is super glassy. They will have to respect the Rock Slide here. If they try and farm down, can hopefully get to another Rock Slide. Oh, and the opponent very wisely counts. Opting to commit the shield, trying to get shields down because a Weavile with shields down is not going to do very well. The Weavile, of course, is going to commit the second shield, but now y'all really messed up and gave Typhlosion shield advantage again, didn't you? We talked about this. <laughs> Foul play getting shielded up and Typhlosion just goes to work here, farming down. And they bring in a Feraligator. Not for long though. Oh no, say it ain't so, Mr. Feraligator. <laughs> Gets absolutely wrecked. In comes the Sceptile and able to catch on to the Meloetta. I'm very glad that Meloetta was was able to help out here endgame. Because this is just the Typhlosion show. I know Meloetta was the featured act, but Typhlosion is stealing the show in these battles. Oh my goodness. Alright, hopping into the next match here. Alright, we have Meloetta into Alolan Ninetales. And this is the Powder Snow variant. Very curious to see how this match does, because this will be one of our first opportunities to see how Meloetta does against a pretty popular XL Pokemon. Over farming by just a little bit and going for the Psy Shock. I'm curious to see how much this does. Psy Shock comes through. Well, we don't get to find out as it gets a shield. But my guess is we could see a no shield here because they have a very good response to this in Typhlosion. And now he's just going to bring in the Typhlosion. The opponent switches out into Politoed. But the nice thing is Tangrowth is here to hard punish the Politoed. Has to respect the Blizzard. This is enough. Shields it up. And it's the Blizzard. Fantastic shield there. And now you can over farm a ton and go for the Power Whip to secure the KO. And since the Tangrowth over farmed enough, they do have a Rock Slide available to potentially throw at an Alolan Ninetales. They opt to go for the Power Whip instead. Bit of a misplay there. Rock Slide is going to be the better option. Shields up the Weather Ball. Can they get to the Rock Slide? Oh, and they do an amazing catch back onto the Typhlosion. Very nicely done. Weather Ball not doing a whole lot. In comes a Shiny Snorlax. That looks incredible. But as we've seen, Shiny Snorlax does not appreciate Typhlosion's Blast Burns and how quickly it gets to moves. This Body Slam is fine. Don't have to worry about it. Typhlosion survives it. And the nice thing is he banked a move on the Tangrowth. So even if the Alolan Ninetales is able to take him out here, he's still in a comfortable position. Although Typhlosion just farms down. Oh my goodness. I'm going to have to try Typhlosion, aren't I? I'm picking up a very cool lead in Gliscor. Now, this is a little rough. Gliscor does have access to Night Slash, and Night Slash will hit for super effective damage. All right, and they actually go for an Aerial Ace, so a very interesting moveset there. Typically on Gliscor, you are going to want to run Night Slash and Earthquake, as that's typically the more conventionally better moveset. Tough decision to make, opting to shield up and go for a switch advantage at the expense of shields and able to confusion down. Meloetta does have a lot of energy available to it, so it's going to be very important to see what comes in. It's a Grand Bull going for the Psy Shock, probably hoping that they can get to two Psy Shocks here. Unfortunately, unable to do so, but able to get the shield. Typhlosion comes in. They have a Kanto Muck over farming as much as possible. Typhlosion farming all the way up to two Blast Burns. 
and oh man, this is this is not gonna go Kanto Muck's way. Kanto Muck is exceedingly tanky, but again, these blast burns from Typhlosion just hit so hard. Oh my goodness, gets the shield. I wanna see how much this does. Let's see it. <laughs> that just does so much damage. Oh my goodness. Thunder Punch, that's not gonna take it out. Can he get to another blast burn here? He can. Hello, Gramble. Goodbye, Gramble. I promise y'all this was meant to be a Meloetta feature, but Typhlosion is just taking over. Oh, man. All right, hopping to the final match here. Meloetta into Giratina Origin. Now, as we've seen before, this is actually a pretty good matchup for Meloetta. As Shadow Ball still does a decent chunk, but not nearly as much as it would if it was a pure Psychic type. And now, able to go for the Psy Shock, this will be doing a nice chunk of damage. And if they don't shield it, this will get it into confusion downrange. We do see a shield come up, and Meloetta is definitely going to be mirroring shields here because the back line really doesn't want to see a Giratina origin. Going for the Psy Shock, will they double commit shields? They do. So the back line could be weak to Meloetta. At this point, I like saving shields here because the Giratina is low enough where you can probably come in with, yeah, either Typhlosion or the Tangrowth and just farm up a bunch of energy. Shielding up what's probably a Shadow Ball here. And let's see if they switch. They do not. Y'all really gave Typhlosion a huge energy lead again. They bring in a Nido Queen. That's not going to save you from Typhlosion's wrath here. Oh man, that does huge damage. And now going for another Blast Burn. What is in the back? Oh no. Granbull again. Granbull, how many times do we have to teach you this lesson, old man? <laughs> as Granbull just gets vaporized as well. Oh my goodness. So all in all, looking at Meloetta in the Ultra League, I think it has a very interesting niche. It can do very well, specifically if you're seeing a lot of Machamp Gengar cores, a lot of Snorlax in addition with those. It has a really unique typing that can allow it to do very well against those particular cores. Now Typhlosion, get yourself one. That thing went crazy. <laughs> Typhlosion can be an incredibly powerful pick in this meta. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. If you're enjoying the content, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And a special thank you as always to our members here on YouTube. The support you guys provide is absolutely incredible. So thank you guys oh so very much. And until next time, I've been Home Slice Henry.